So I've just cleaned the palette, uh, just taking a rag and wiping it off so I can get started painting my darkest tones. So let's take a number six brush, or shall I go for a number eight? Slightly bold and be a bit bigger. Yeah, let's take a bigger brush. So I've got a number eight brush here, lovely long filbert. And like with most oil or acrylic paintings, I work relatively traditionally working from dark to light. So I'm gonna paint the darkest tonal values first. So quite often I stand back, I half close my eyes and ask myself, where are my darkest darks? Where are the blackest colors that I can see? So I can see that they're, they're sort of in the jaw here, under the beard, the mustache, the nose, the eyes, and parts of the hair. So those are the bits that I'm gonna paint in first using the, uh, the thicker paint. So let's take uh, this number eight brush. I'm gonna bring a hint of the medium now, a little bit of linseed oil. So I'm not using the thinner anymore. I'll be using the medium itself, uh, not too much of it. And like most uh, paintings with the glazes, the, uh, the darker colors tend to be a little bit th uh, thinner with the glaze. And as they get lighter, I'll work more opaque, less with the glaze. Um, it just works out nicely uh, in the end result. So I've got uh, just pure, black and let's start putting in some of these bold brush strokes. So I've got an eye in there and let's get a sense of where the eyebrow is. So I'm still class this in a way as drawing uh, with the brush. I mean, all painting is drawing for me. I think it's all a range of mark making. Popping it in the right place. You can see I'm using my little finger as a sort of, almost as a mild stick, just to kind of keep it nice and steady. I'm squinting, so I'm half closing my eyes and that's helping me see the tonal values a little clearer. It kind of takes away detail and unnecessary information so I can focus on those, the larger masses and the strength of the tones and not worried about detail. This is not detailed painting. This is this is what we call blocking in, sort of getting in with a good sized brush, the real essence of what's important. The whole point of blocking in is to get your tonal values right and to get your colors right as well. And the detail like, kind of like icing a cake will happen at the end of the process. We've got to bake our cake first. We've got to make something, which is what the blocking in stage is all about. And for me, blocking in is the best part. It's the most exciting bit. It's where all the important work happens. So we've got this dark mark here. I'm trying to be very deliberate and decisive with my mark making. I don't want to mess about with it and rubbing it. I want to try and lay that mark and try and leave it without fussing and fiddling it away. Thinking back to how Zorn painted with those really strong, confident brush strokes. They may look sort of slapped on and unthought, but there does come a certain amount of precision where they go on. We've already thought out compositionally where they're going to fall. You can still have a effortless flick brush stroke, but laid on with real certainty and clarity. Okay, so those are sort of my real darkest blacks. And of course I worked across the whole of the head. Don't just do just the eyes or just the hair, the nose. Try and work en masse across the whole thing. So I'm gonna start working up the scale of tone. So I've started with absolute black. We're gonna go a little bit lighter, not too light, but I'm gonna work with those very dark reds and browns. So this is where we use the palette, take the red and bring that over. So we're combining the black and the red. So it gives you a very warm brown, beautiful color. Not too thick, no medium in this so far. And this is really good for those dark browns and shadows that you can see, for example, on the tip of the nose there. So it's almost black, it's not quite. It does tonally stand out. That sort of melts away into there. And quite often these marks are the ones that are very close to the black that you've already laid down. I've just put a little bit of white in, so I'm just doing this 
color down here. It's slightly paler. It feels chalky. And if ever a color feels chalky, it's because it's got a bit of white mixed into it. And it's just a fraction darker. Just in there. And a bit more black. And you can notice on the palette, I'm mixing all of that close to my dark. So all my dark colours are, of course, close to the black. So it just keeps the palette organised and less likely to cause any problems in regards to mixing accurate colours. As I get lighter, I'll move to the white or red. I'll move closer to the red and ochre close to the ochre. Um, let's look at uh, here. So this is sort of dark under there. It gets much more red under there, so we won't do that just yet. Let's look around now. The eye socket so Tony that's probably a little bit too dark for the moment but the eye socket here so the eye is sunken into an eye socket so the light is not really hitting this area remember with an eye socket our eye is sunken in inside the skull so you've got the top of the forehead and your cheekbone protecting your eye so if I sort of put my hand against there my hand can't hit my eye because it's protected by the skull so because it's sort of sunken inside it will always be uh, in some point in shadow. So never paint the region or the area of an eye too light because it never looks that way. You don't have light coming from it. It's always sunken in. So I've got a little bit of reflected light on this side. So the way that the light uh, is hitting the head on the right hand side, we've got a bit of light hitting the white of the wall. It's sort of bouncing back. So can you see here, it's sort of a bit cooler. Uh, we're thinking about temperature. So by putting a little bit of white into this mixture, we're getting this really interesting grey, warmy grey colour. A bit of white just takes that down and, and that's the sort of tone and colour that I'm seeing on that side um, of this reflected light. Ooh, tone that's a bit too light. Just push that down with the darkness a bit more with the black and allow those brush strokes that you've already laid on, they're just going to sort of melt into each other. I don't want any hard lines or edges at this stage. There's a suggestion of where the white of an eye, which would be hiding in there somewhere, but I'll look at detail and figure that out a little bit later. And we've got the cast shadow from the hair onto the skin, which reads a lot warmer and I'm just laying those brush strokes over each other. They sort of slightly overlap by about a millimetre or so. The brush strokes don't lay side by side with a gap. I'm slightly overlap them so they sort of merge in with each other. So it's not so much blending but you're marrying those brush strokes together. It'll read and come across a lot more authentic and it'll stop these sort of white gaps and these white lines coming through which will make the picture look flat. Constantly working around the picture as a whole, not focusing on one bit at a time. Uh, let's look at that region there. So I need to go ever so slightly paler now. So a little bit of white and ochre into this mix there. So it's less warm. It's not as warm as this mixture here. Right, sort of it's this area I'm trying to create there. Not bad. So let's sort of pop there. It seems to be, need to go slightly purpley. So I'm going to take this sort of colour here and take a little bit of this black and sort of pop it in. Can you see it just changes that property? It makes it slightly cooler. Remember that red and black creates a sort of purpley, plummy sort of look, which is a bit cooler and that reads much better. Let's just take a bit more of that white then into this area there. So it's sort of a combination of those colours there, a little warmer. So it's, co it's, it's constantly thinking in terms of light and dark tonally, or lightness and darkness of a colour, but also the colour temperature, the warmness and coolness of a colour. If you constantly ask yourself those questions, light and dark, warm and cool, that will help you mix your colours a little bit more accurately. And I'm going to get lighter in that socket, so I'm not worried about that for the moment, where the hair melts up into that space there. Uh, just doing a quick check. Got a really nice mark under there. There's a sort of more yellow into that one. 
it's really interesting just because that is very pale, but it's not quite as pale as I've done it. So bring it a little darker. And again, just allow the edges of that brush stroke just to merge in. Okay, so I'm just wiping that brush. So taking off the excess, I don't wash my brush uh, in the mineral spirits because that will bring a lot of moisture back into the palette. So I just take a rag or a piece of kitchen paper, take off the worst of the paint until it's uh, ready for the next mark. So I'm going to push up now to my, what I sort of really describe as my real mid-tones, um, which is sort of here. So working with the red and the ochre and the white. So mixing that in sort of equal measures give you a real lovely rich orangey pink colour um, but I want to sort of bring that in to where I've got my palette. So you see how I've mixed my palette, all the colours are sort of joined together and working in with each other. A bit red down this area. Okay so I've got this and I'm getting slightly thicker with the consistency of paint. Okay there's more stuff on my brush if you like and when this warmth comes on it it's a real welcomed addition because at the moment it looks very cold and stark. This is where the temperature and the fleshiness will start to come in. Uh, slightly dark on that nose. Again, not getting carried away with detail. It's very tempting just to spend time faffing and putting that in, but just still thinking about just blocking it in. Really soft brush strokes there, don't want to be pushing too hard for clarity. And there's a paleness there which I really like, uh, which I'll do in a moment. Let's look at around the eye here. There, the edge of that nose is probably going to be a bit paler. Uh, around there, a little warmer, so just take the red and I'm going to do this bottom left hand side of my palette will be where my pinky reds are. So I've got this real nice rhythm going on. There's a lovely orangey bit in there. If I bring those two together. Just using the tips of those bristles there just to smudge and bring those colors there. And then let's start going up paler again. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave that brush. I'm going to have that brush as my sort of darker brush and jump up to another. So I've got one brush for my sort of darker tones and I'll use this brush for my paler, my lighter colours. Just going to clean up that area there of my palette. So I don't want those colours mixing in with my darker colours so it keeps it uh, much paler. Okay let's sort of bring that white in and as I'm getting paler I'm getting thicker with the paint, a lot thicker. So let's start putting on again I'm half closing my eyes. These aren't the pure highlights yet but just working it lighter and lighter as we go. There's a sort of an ochre green colour, just a sort of a, a cooler version. It's sort of there, and it pales up a little bit. A little bit more black. There we go. Just in there, the coolness around the eyes. The skin around the eyes doesn't have many blood vessels in there, so it looks a lot cooler. Let's go to my warmer cadmium reds. And it gets slightly sort of purpley. So if I take just a hint of black into this area here where the red the reds are dwelling and a bit of pale. There you go. Can you see the difference? That's a much 
cooler colour, which works really well for this part of the face where you've got the facial hair coming through, and that's just going to read a lot more convincingly. It's almost all that area, and then it does get paler as we go. So that's sort of disappearing to there. I want to put a suggestion of more of those cools in actually. So taking the black into this area, not too much, you've got to be very light and delicate with that use of black. Just literally picked up just a few on the very whiskers of the brush. And it can even take just a little bit more, just down here, there. And it's amazing how that sort of really reads as a much cooler tone. And then I'm going to push up now to the kind of the very last bit of light part. Now I suppose actually I should think about getting just the elements of that hair in. I'm going to get another brush, which I'm going to use primarily as the grey brush for uh, the clothing. So I'm going to bring the white and the kind of the grey over here. So this is just white and grey put in together there. And I want to keep this relatively thin. Let's just bring a little bit of the medium in just to give me that transparency. And I like how that just sort of almost melts into the clothing, uh, into the background, sorry. Right, so take that edge out there. And the way the light catches that against the dark is quite nice. So I can't really make that sort of perfect blue colour, but that's a sort of the alternative that I can do. So sometimes if you have, for example, a, a bright blue, you have to substitute it. We know we can't make bright blue, so make it a sort of a, a grey blue instead. Don't be tempted to add a colour to your palette. Try and stick to this limited palette and the whole thing will read a lot more effectively. So I mean, I've got this sort of blue shirt here and I cannot make that exact blue, but that doesn't matter. I can make a sort of a representation of that blue, but the eye will still understand it. It's not going to take anything away from the whole picture just because it isn't that specific blue. And then let's do a similar thing with the hair. There's a hint of warmth, just comparing some of the colour of the hair to there to there. It just seems to me ever so slightly warmer. So I'll take a bit of the ochre, a tiny bit of ochre, not too much. Um, it will sort of push it too towards the green otherwise. But it just warms it up a little bit. And just splash that in a few places where you see those mid greys. And I need to go a bit darker. So let's just use that. Um, again, squinting down, the less you see, the easier it will be. And again, keep it just really soft. Painting hair as if it's smoke, just melts away. I don't want it to be too striking. Pushing just a bit of dark in that area there. Just drawing the shape of the hair. It gets lighter in that area there just wiping the brush down and I can then pick up the white into the grey and put on those sort of the highlight again this is all blocking in remember I'm not this is not about detail I'm not trying to paint hair I'm just trying to get the right tone the lightness and darkness and the right depiction of colour using this limited palette that's what this is all about we'll come to detail and such in the next bit. Okay, so when I've got that in, let's just finally block in then the highlights uh, on, on the face. So let's work in a lot whiter. So as I work pale and whiter, I'm working closer to the blob of white on the palette and working thicker even still. So it's really being put on nice and fat, nice and neat. Okay, so that looks good. So we've got a very bright bit there. 
let's just take the image a little bigger just so I can get those shapes right. So I'm painting the sort of the shape of this muscle here. Do you notice I'm following the sort of the planes of the muscle? So the muscle here from the bridge of the nose to the cheek is sort of coming across there and I'm following that line. I'm not sort of painting it in little segments that way. I'm going from left to right. It's much easier to paint and it kind of looks a lot more convincing as well. Um, that shape then sort of merges down here. It slightly overlaps this colour as you can see it's taking over and if I just sort of run the brush up once or twice it'll just marry and merge those brush strokes together. So strong highlight here. Um, and taking that in there. And there's a lovely finishing highlight just over the eyebrow there. And then let's look at the base of the nose. There. I need to sort of just go back up to my pinks a little bit just to get a rough shape. That's a little bit more convincing than what I've done at the moment. Make that push that nostril back, that'll help. And uh, lastly, this ear hasn't got anything on, which I've just noticed. So let's just blob in a good bit of, can I say that in just one whoosh, little brush stroke there up into the hair. And I can take then the grey brush and just soften that edge there, just so it softens out. And then it gets a little redder take my other brush which is my red but a bit bigger and just sort of allow that to disappear remember nobody looks at ears I can just melt away so that's my sort of blocking done I was focusing on the dark values the mid tones and the highlights sort of in that order from dark to light we focus on getting that color right so if I was struggling on the color thinking of both the coolness and the warmness using that limited palette so I'm gonna take a short break come back and then I'll try and bring it all together with the finishing details <laughs> 